welcome to the United States. To the casual eye, they seem no different from other summer tourists. Come to marvel at the Colorado mountains. But they're here instead to conquer mountains in America's longest and toughest bicycle race. Okay, there's 972. I'm, I'm almost certain these will be uh, eight, eight Men's and women's teams from 15 nations. 122 athletes in all are assembling for nine days of grueling high altitude racing. There's no easy way to train for a major stage race like the Coors Classic. It can take a hundred miles of pedaling a day just to keep a body tuned. It takes a lot of calories too, but breakfast offers more than just food. For the young American Greg LeMond, a rising star with the French professional team of Renault Gitan, it's an early chance to meet the dominant force in international amateur cycling, a national team from the Soviet Union. But you must help me see that climate job in the world. Well, afterwards, I woke up at three o'clock in the morning yesterday and had to. I was writing down on the side of the bed this scrawly thing, saying, uh, "Don't forget the thorns." It was the thorns and the roses, because last year they forgot to cut the thorns off the roses, and the girl had her hand up in the air, and there was this blood coming down her her arm. Yeah, so basically what we want to get here is like the brake pads off the rim so it's properly centered. It's a tub. It's in the yeah, yeah, yeah. They're called pouches. They're laminated. Well, I'm giving you the bills. Mm -hmm. You always give me bills. Uh, okay. For most riders, the immediate problem is getting used to the dry heat and the Colorado altitude. Even a well-conditioned body needs time to adjust. They're going to be translating okay. the Bible. So can you be there? To yeah, sure. To... I can translate with them before they come here. And I see them come. All right. Do you, you, easy. Okay. okay. I'll work with them over there. You know, I will see them over there. No, I need a new roster. And we'll translate to the people That's the before they come. Thing. It's the first visit to the States for the powerful Soviet team whose success lies in disciplined teamwork. They've been known to sweep the first five places in international competition. He said, my mechanic does not have a room. Can you try and find him one? What, is his name Bill West? Because if he's Bill West, then he's got a room. He's rooming with Barry Lysette. If you put a special race regulation into your Bible, then you can do it. Okay. You can have a variance on the fiat regulation. Renaud Chiton has built a team around Le Mans for his first return to major competition in the United States since turning professional. So that was originally scheduled to happen right during the sportscast, live on what TV. What time the sportscast? 5.22, So I will no try problem. to delay him accordingly. Uh, <laughs> I don't believe it. All right, too many little complications that we have to do. Hold on. Michael! Thanks a lot. Ernesto's on the phone. He's sick. Training on the famed Morgul Bismarck course offers riders a preview of what's often a decisive stage of the course classic. Pas de problème. Si on est leader par équipe, on porte la casquette de leader, donc la casquette correcte. Oui, au Spain Oui, à Jutte. T'as compris Donc là, c'est normal. Let's go to the Mac Relations. That's where you come to the comes the bowler, not the cycle, the Mac Relations. <laughs> We break all theories in cycling. Still win races. Alors, est-ce qu'on peut régler le problème des, des noms C'est pas un problème pour nous. Donc, on, 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 disons qu'on n'a rien prévu encore. Alors, qu'est-ce qu'on peut faire Est-ce qu'ils peuvent nous, nous dépanner euh... We're having the mate. A training ride in Boulder Canyon can be a painful challenge, even for a former world champ like Petra de Bruin and her teammates. There's nothing to compare with this back home in Holland. Big ones, right? Ah, this is better. This is better. Uh, I just the other one looked like an hors d'oeuvre trail. Yeah, was in the pre-race days, Ireland's Alan McCormick enjoys the clown's role, but when the gun sounds, he'll push himself to his Where's limit and beyond. <laughs> Start of the race, we're going to have Peter Coors in the pace car. We're going to have uh, Kelly Marshall in one of the cars. We're going to have you in one of the cars. I just got through meeting with these guys from Omega and the timing camera, and they're going to be able to produce for the first time this year 
which is great. These reprints that will come right out of the camera, and the finish line will be right here. Yeah, well, when you've got an eight-hour bicycle race, you got about four or five hours where you're not going so hard, so you can entertain people. Yeah. You have to entertain yourself and fall asleep on the bike. Has interest in uh, racing picked up since uh, breaking away? <laughs> well, I think it's picked up despite breaking away. <laughs> Good evening. I hope I still get cheered at the On the eve of the race, the teams are given a final briefing. Some of you have met me before. I think you all understand that uh, I try to be fair. My job is part of the... Chief Commissar team. Ian Emerson from I'm Great Britain and his crew of officials the, will have the task of monitoring each race and enforcing the regulations. And believe me, I'll try and do that. Robert Carpenter introduced the, the Bible to you. Everything you need to know about this race, including the regulations, is in that book. Please read it carefully. Got one the extra person. Want to make here the French team is that they want a feeding van that will stay in place, that will not leapfrog through the race, that will be in its feeding place, fixed before the race, and it will stay there at the side of the road because feeding and mechanics are two different things. And they're very, very concerned about this. I think the problem is in trying to get the team vehicles, which we are very limited in team vehicles largely due to the, Cal uh, the Colorado Highway Patrol. What we want to do is to get them on the lower balcony, which is the official's balcony. We have the duty roster list. We have specific assignments as to corners. Following your name is an address. The start is on Broadway. Yeah, we're going to get past those road constructions. <laughs> right. You short a car. What, what car? Pace car. No, no, wait a second. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's the Jetta. The Jetta's been put behind the motors. That's a good race for you today, you know? Not too many hills. Mel! Oh, God, how's that working out? All right. Get some marmalade and some bread, please. Okay. All right. What? Get him a pizza. <laughs> for breakfast, right? For a road trip. Aquí es muy famoso. They're on the way. Io ho chiesto a loro dieci giorni fa per mangiare il più normale. Make hailstones. He's got the green here. You've got the earring. Thank you. Okay, Greg. Sorry. Tell them I'm sorry. Okay. Put it 13 for a Thirteenth? Yeah, all the way down. Fifteen seconds. Ten seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a big send-off to these bike riders. The first stage of the Coors International Bicycle Classic is about to begin. Let's Over the next nine days, the riders will compete in 19 individual stages, road races, circuit courses, and time trials, covering nearly a thousand miles through Boulder, Denver, Loveland, Estes Park, Vale, and Snowman. Our support motorcycles with the team mechanics on, spare wheels and equipment rolling off. Road races winding across the Continental Divide are a test of strength and endurance over long distances. On the downhill side, the riders can reach speeds of 60 miles an hour. But for every descent, there's another climb ahead. By the end of nine days, they'll have climbed a total of 35,000 feet. After each event, stage winners and other riders selected at random are routinely tested by the race doctors for any stimulants prohibited under strict international standards. Stage 
five, number ten, specimen A. Criteriums are medium distance races over a short loop, designed for tight turns and quick sprints. Other circuit courses offer steep, torturous grades. After 17 laps, the riders will know why they call this Suicide Hill. There's no room for team tactics here, so the advantage falls to strong individual riders, like Le Mans. day, they ride to the limit of exhaustion and come right back for more, pushing through the pain and ignoring the danger. Only the fittest athlete can survive the pace. A stage race doesn't have to be all Spartan sacrifice. The host communities hold receptions where the riders have a chance to socialize a while before moving on to the next competition. Okay, 12. <laughs> okay, 13. <laughs> Time trials hit each rider against the clock. Now in Italy. And he's off! Every race goes on, regardless of the elements. While the men compete each day, the women too are waging battle, often on the same course used for the men's races. In its short history, the Coors Classic has already become the premier stage race in the world for women attracting international-class cyclists from Sweden, Holland, France, Canada, and the United States. Hi, I'm Jeff, I'm the medical officer. What'd you do? What'd you, what'd you land? Okay. You heard anywhere else? Right up there! One minute 51. Right. You, you shout him, I'll check him. A photo finish camera records an image of each rider as he crosses the line. Two? Yeah. 22? Right. 
six. The results are compiled by the officials and fed into a computer which continually updates the individual and team standings. And our victory bouquet. Although stage wins are important, overall times are what really count. The eventual winner will be determined on the basis of the lowest accumulated time for all stages. The individual with the lowest time going into each stage is given a special jersey identifying him as the race leader. Yuri Kashirin of the Soviet Union, his teammates Zagardinov and the American George Mount are first, second, and third place winners here today. At the end of seven days, Greg Laman holds a small lead over Norberto Caceres of Colombia with the American professional George Mount in third. But the Soviets are close behind, and the race on the Morgul Bismarck is yet to come. All right, you got any sore muscles today, guys? Yeah, my knees are a little sore from those mountains. Yeah. The mountain. yeah. The only people the Russians chased were the AMF guys because they're really battling that team. team. Though they're rivals, each racing professionally for a foreign team, Lamond and Mount share the same goal, to protect their individual standings. For that, they'll need a common strategy. We've got to count on your guys, too. They're dying. I mean, they said they're going to go as hard as they can. It's the food, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just, they're not ready. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. your guys are... Can't have the same deal. I mean, probably even worse. But yeah, well, they're hurting from the altitude, but they're also I've got more experience and more horsepower. If those guys take off, there's only one tactic we have: you just do like the pros. You just put them at the front and hammer. I know. Just make it in because line. If you get three guys, three Russians away with one of us in there, all they're going to do is attack us. We're going to get dropped. They're going to still finish like five minutes. Because of course, for them, there isn't any hard climbing. It isn't long enough for us, so it's going to come down to control. The mortal Bismarck seven times around a parked circuit through the foothills of the Rockies. 92 miles of hammering under a relentless sun. For all but the strongest, it can take a heavy toll. Irishman McCormick makes the first move. Greg Demjan and Mark Fries follow in quick succession. In the pack, there's little concern. It's still far too early, and the breakaway group is no threat in the standing. Mount tries a sprint, but the Russian, Yuri Baranov, is right on his wheel to keep the attack in check. As the third lap begins, the Soviets make their expected move in pursuit of the leaders. Laman goes with them, along with Alessandro Pozzi of the Italian team. McCormick's group has built a two-minute lead, but they're no match for the machine-like precision of the chase group. To conserve energy, riders usually take turns at the front, since the lead rider faces more wind resistance. Without their teammates to assist them, Lamond and Pozzi have little choice but to sit in at the rear and let the Russians do all the pulling. For George Mount, the time is critical. If he can't find a way to bridge the gap soon, it may be too late to catch up. First call for lunch. 
At the feed zone, there's no time for tablecloths and candlelight, only a musette bag on the run, the ultimate fast food restaurant. On a race like this, a rider can burn as many as 3,500 calories and four quarts of water. Well, that's a two-day wheel change. By the next lap, the chase group has easily overtaken the leaders, dropping Demjan and Fries. But McCormick has managed to attach himself to the rear of the group. Time and again, Mount tries to attack, but no one's willing to help and each time he's easily reeled back in. With a $350 cash prize at stake on the next to last lap, a classic confrontation develops between the Olympic gold medalist, Sergei Sukaruchenkov in his blue King of the Mountain jersey, and the young pro Le Mans in the race leader's red and black. Le Mans wins the sprint, but thinks twice about trying to stay out alone. Better to drop back and save something for later. It's the next sprint that will really count. Now the final assault is underway. The Soviet riders working smoothly together at the front. Lamond and McCormick holding on at the rear. For George Mount, time has run out, along with hope of even a third place finish. Incredibly, with little more than a mile to go, McCormick has taken a flyer, hoping to catch the others by surprise. His only hope is to jump out as far as possible and try to hang on. But it's one man against the wind, and his tired legs can't keep up the pace. The dream is soon overtaken by the reality. As the long climb to the finish line begins, Lamont makes his move, hammering past Oleg Lugvin to take the lead. But Baranov is instantly on his wheel in a furious dash for the summit. After 92 miles, it all comes down to a matter of inches. Though LeMond is beaten, he's managed to protect his lead in the overall standing. There's no handing up of water, there's no feeding, only spraying. We have a couple of lost children. Jacob, a two-year-old, is lost. He has brown hair, blue shorts, and an overall top. Going into the final race, Greg Lamont has the gold medal within reach. But a bad spill or mechanical failure can change his destiny quickly. With 30,000 cheering fans on hand and the frames flowing freely, the pace is swift. There can be no let up for Lamont. He'll have to earn his victory today. 
$50. Okay, so how much is this cream for? $50. Okay. From the acupuncture center in Boulder? Yeah, acupuncture center in Boulder. All right. $50 and there goes cream. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. The Russian was off the front, and uh, I was hoping that American like Davis Finney or Steve Bauer would win. So I was helping them control the Russians, and I uh, went too fast in the last corner. And wiped out. <laughs> but you got back up. You had four minutes or more in hand, and that was enough to win it here today. The team from the Soviet Union. In their typical manner, the Russians have won team honors and the respect of the crowd. For the men's and women's individual winners, Americans Connie Carpenter and Greg LeMond, it's the gold medals and a proud day.